Ooh, music. It turned out to be a pretty nice day today. I thought it was going to be rainy and shitty. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Elephant butt? <laughs> what the hell? Elephant butt, New Mexico. Oh, no, that's not butt. Never mind. This, I read that wrong. The states get great names for their towns. Yeah. And welcome back to another episode of Stories from the Shed. My name is Adam, and with me this week is a man who tells me his fake plants died because he didn't pretend to water them. Jake, how you doing? I don't pretend to do a lot of things. <laughs> What's up, man? Oh, you know, living the life. Yeah? What brings you out here on a warm Monday? On a warm Monday? Well, our last recording was garbage, so we're here doing it over. Doing a redo. Jurgen, you came back. What's up? Uh, not much. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, I'm tired. It's been a shitty day at work. What? We don't have shitty days oh. there. No. <laughs> that's, no. A, that's a fucking wonderful place. That's beautiful a beautiful place. A beautiful place. I love handling paperwork. Yeah. Paperwork. And data All 3, entry. 3,000 pages entry. of it. Oh, it was great. It was yeah. great. I wanted to club myself over the fucking head by the time I was done with that. It sounds like, like a do, very pleasant day. Like, do, we, do we need to uh, mail this out? I have another use for it. <laughs> Couldn't I just send you a disc? Like make a freaking dumpster fire out of it. My God. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Beat me War, over the head. Warm the homeless with this damn thing. Come <laughs> on. Real. What's wrong they with you? need paper in their fire pit barrel things too so you know what we ain't drinking tonight but you know what we did drink water i did you drank some water i did and then i forgot my water bottle on the counter we had some pale ale by grateful grain last time we did this it was called camp road pale ale i think so it's pretty good we gave that a four i'm still giving it a four Mm -hmm. i'm still giving it a four i'm still enjoying it to this day (laughs) <laughs> man it takes you forever to finish that beer it was good it's it's kind of warm now ah, but it's okay. good so i think we'll stick with that another solid four on that one that was a delicious beer i don't think you had any of that i think you had some wine yeah i brought an entire bottle of wine and basically drank the whole thing because of the content and um it was called pajama drama from traveling vineyard um it was pretty good i gave it a four um yeah no pajama drama in here tonight. No, no. no. This is all business. This is all business tonight. Jake, what are we doing today? Uh, we're going to talk about, what's his face? Um, David Parker Ray. Sounds like an actor. He's got an actory name. Old DPR, baby. DPR. What do we got on him? <laughs> what do we got on, on old DPR? Oh my God. Can we just call him that for the rest of the show? Yeah. Let's just call yeah. him DPR. DPR. Yeah. So DPR, also known as the Toy Box Killer, was an American suspected serial killer and known torturer of women. Uh, There were never any bodies found, but he was accused by his accomplices of killing several people and suspected by police to have murdered as many as 60 women from Arizona and New Mexico while living in Elephant Butt. Elephant Butte! It's a Butte! (laughs) Butte. Butte. I got a friend from Jabute, and he would tell you that that is Elephant Butte. Okay. I believe believe whatever his name is. (laughs) Elephant Butt, New Mexico. (laughs) Approximately seven miles north of Truth or Consequences. Uh, He soundproofed a truck trailer, like an 18-wheeler type trailer? Yes. And uh, basically turned it into a toy, what he called a toy box. It was basically a place to use people for his own sexual needs and desires and fantasies and you name it, basically. More like a box of filth. And something that I hate about this, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you. What? He's a suspected serial killer, okay? He, He said that like in the first line. Why does this guy get his middle name if he's only suspected? Okay. Real serial killers. Get the full three. Get the full three. This guy is just a fucking, who knows? Who knows if he, he's suspected? You don't get the fucking badge yet. This isn't everybody gets a trophy of serial killers. Come on, let's get some proof on it. <laughs> for a minute, I was not along with you for the ride. David I, Ray. I, I see where you're going. All right. So the thing about it is, is in all like the media, I see they, they do the full like DPR. But when you watch like documentaries on him, he's just David Ray. David Ray. So it's, I don't know. Well, to us, he's DPR. He's DPR now. And he's definitely DTF. So, uh... <laughs> Gross! Uh, uh, geez. There's a little bit known about his, um, his early childhood. Uh, he had a younger sister named Peggy. Uh, of course they, he did. Yeah, of course, Peggy. Poor Peggy. They lived with a disciplinarian-type grandfather. Uh, no surprise there, being, you know, in the 30s and 40s. Or the fact that he turned up so fucked up. <laughs> Super disciplinarian-type, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, now he was sporadically visited by his violent alcoholic father. Now get this, his father used to give him 
And I want to say it's anime because I don't think they had that shit back then, but it's like some kind of... You just of, offended a whole group of people. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you anime porn people. They had other stuff before all this for cartoon Yeah, porn. they had real porn. I think there was like uh, there was like weird pornographic type drawings, but also like pornographic magazines that depicted like more than just... Say it. He gave him a bunch of Playboy. Well, I don't no, think it was, it was Playboy, Playboy, dude. Yeah. Playboy is classy. Come on now. Oh, okay. Those girls got me. class. They're not taking a baseball bat up the ass like these chicks were. He was sending them some fucked up shit, okay? That's the kind of stuff that he was giving his young child that, like, woo, crazy shit. And I think I've seen some of this because in the documentary that I watched, there were diagrams all over the walls of this, like, that were, like, depicting, like, all the different acts. It was pretty wild. Very interesting. And uh, also not that uh, much of a surprise he was uh, the type of kid that was also bullied by his peers uh, for his shyness around girls, which also kind of fits into the whole... Nothing uh, wrong with that. Well, no, but I mean... I the like whole, my shy boys. But the whole killer thing, Ed Kemper was very shy. Uh, a lot of, of these other was. guys uh, were very shy. But Jake, you could probably tell us a little bit about his sexual fantasies that started to... Oh, thank you. I'll Ooh. pass that ball right back to you, dog. <laughs> right no, back to me. I'll do it. All right, tell us about his sexual fantasies. All right. Ooh, I can't Ooh. wait. Ooh. His sexual fan uh his Ooh. sexual fantasies of raping, torturing, and even murdering women developed during his teenage years. Around this time, his sister discovered his sadomasochistic drawings, um, as well as pornographic photographs of bondage acts. After completing high school, he worked as an auto mechanic, kinda like Jake here. Are you done? No. Uh, <laughs> he received an honor for honorable discharge from the U.S. Army, where his service also included work as a general mechanic. And his sob was always broken down. Yeah, this is starting to. <laughs> this... Do you, you have? Both. Do you have some BDSM drawings fuck at your you house? Both. No, fuck you. No comment. <laughs> I'm not shaming you. <laughs> I am. So apparently, he was married and divorced four different times. He had two children, including um, one of which we'll get to, named Glenn. Linda Jean Jesse Ray. Wow, she gets four names. Why do why does everyone in this family have actor names? And like why is she Jesse? Yeah, that's a really good question. She's Where does Glenda Glenda Jean, Jean get to Jesse? Like I could see Jessica. Yeah. But I prefer it if you guys said Jesse. Jesse? Jesse Ray? Jesse Ray? We always do that. You know, kinda interesting uh, with what you said. Married several times, mm -hmm. divorced several times. That also seems like it's a trend. Right. With I don't a lot know, of these maybe guys. maybe his wives just didn't get his like kink. I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, he I had some say. super kink. Hey, no. strap these to your nipples, honey. This is really going to get me off. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking I keep hitting the mic set here. It's very hard to find headphones. someone like that. <laughs> I know, right? I, I could see that being tough. I know you were kind of joking, but you're probably right. You think he waited till he was married to, to break it on them? You should never do that. Don't do that. Especially if your name is DPR. Yeah, right. if, if that's what you're doing, you should definitely know within the first week. When you meet DPR, he's probably going to show up with his German Shepherd anyways. And from what? right off, he it's, has three German Shepherds. Oh, yeah, he does. No yes, bitches because he, he don't need no pups. He don't need no pups. He don't need no pups. One of them is really big, and we might get into that later. He's I'll, a I'll, moose of a shepherd. I'll read it. Right. I'll read it. J That's J my excerpt I'm picking. You, oh. you can have it. All right. Oh, I can't wait. Jake, tell us a little bit about the crimes. So... Ray sexually tortured and presumably killed his victims using whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, leg spreader bars, surgical blades, and saws. Jesus all normal Christ, shit to this me. This guy is all fucking stocked up. Oh, come on. Who doesn't have a set of leg spreaders in their closet? He also liked to like, stick tons of pins and needles into boobs. So he was practicing for some sort of like acupuncture type of thing? You no, know, I don't know. He should have just did what Albert Fish did and stick him into his groin. Yeah, that was we he was weird. Fish did that. Yeah, sure did. when they yeah. when they x rayed his body, didn't they find like a hundred nail or a hundred pins or some stupid there shit? There were like all pelvis? these like pins in his taint and shit. Yeah. Okay, anyway, side story. Yeah. Pins in the taint. <laughs> it's thought that he terrorized many women with these tools for a number of years while living in New Mexico and he was he was aided by multiple different accomplices, including several of the women he was dating at the time, in the torture room along with his with his sex shit whatever's going on in there uh his torture his torture shit syringes and de and detailed diagrams showing different methods and techniques for inflicting pain there was a homemade electrical generator that he used to torture women too i'm assuming that's what you meant by the nipples thing oh yeah and i'm just saying i'm kind of fat and i feel like that would hurt a lot it's one of my favorite things he did i just you know so woo. there's more to add to that so there's like he he made a metal bra 
that he would put on them where the nips would come out. And sometimes what he would do, it would be for what he would say would be like pleasure and stuff. But there was a period of time during all this where it was like his thing of training where he would actually do it to shock the shit out of you and make you convulse. Oh, that's fun. Wow. Yeah. It's a good thing that this didn't take place in Alaska. And again, I'm doing hand motions here because I have to explain it. Ma- it's imagine. my French coming out. How cold that metal bra would have been in Anchorage. I mean, that's that right true. there, you're going to They call that shock and awe right there. That's shock like, and awe. It's like sticking your tongue to friggin' a pole or something. It'd be terrible. But this yeah. is New Mexico, so uh, at least he had a little courtesy. Yeah, imagine how hot it was inside that trailer in was New it Mexico. Air- was it air conditioned? That was the family. You know, that's a good question. So. You know, I bet you it was. For with, comfort. With the $100,000 that he invested in that fucking trailer, I bet you it was air conditioned. Because if you ask DPR, he was in it just to please them. Yeah, that, that was, yeah you know, that's it. He was really helping them out. Yeah. You know, I watch enough of that. Uh, was that show with Chris Chris Hansen or whatever? The, Chris Hansen. Hansen, yeah. Hansen. These guys are always there helping them out. DPR was doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. He's got the same kind of mentality, right, Jurgen? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have a seat over there. <laughs> yeah. They're always bringing friggin' like, Magnums and Boone's Farm. He's done some <laughs> fucked up shit, you know. <laughs> now the thing is with this guy, is that uh, he wanted his victims to get the full experience. Uh, he wanted them to see everything. There's no f- passing out on DPR. You got to stay awake for this shit. It's yeah, going to be a screamer. and you got to stay awake on the gynecologist table that he had in there too. Wow. And if not, he's going to zap you. I hear those yep. things are not that great. You know, they're not. They're really not. <laughs> Zapped on the gyno. Almost sounds like a shitty video game. Anyways, uh, what do you guys think? What do we got here? Um, take us into the into the toy box. Into the toy box. Take us on a field trip. Let's on move the shed trip? from oh, Maine God. to New Mexico, right outside of the toy box. There's a cactus by the shed and a tumbleweed, and now we're going into the toy box. So, like, what I know about it? Yeah. All right. So he's have got... you been? Is this based on experience? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass on that. Anyway, so he's got this shitty ass fucking trailer with this huge like carport thing on it, and then this like his toy box actually looks somewhat decent. But yeah, there's like no trees. There's fucking like cactuses and tumbleweeds and shit. Um, definitely not a place I want to live. But in the toy box, you kind of go in, and there's these diagrams all over the wall, as well as tons of like different medical devices. Um, Shit he's made himself, weird tubes, um, ligatures, pulleys on the ceiling, ropes everywhere. And then there's this gynecology table that looks nothing like the one you go at the gyno at. It's like black, like, vinyl-y, leathery grossness. Did he make it himself? You know, I don't think he did. He probably got it at some sort of porn shop or something, because you can do that. It's a porno Um, gyno table. Yeah. Um, I really hope there was AC in there, because I wouldn't want to, like, stick to that. That would be awful. Mm. Um, And it had, like restraints with like red ropes all over it um there was like a lot of shit in there like hundreds of thousands of different devices and dildos and like and he made a lot of stuff himself because he was a mechanic just like jake like this is definitely some like no comment shit but then like taking it even further it's kind of crazy i mean this this guy Imagine the time it takes to prep for all this, but right? But it's your hobby, you know. This is a full-on hobby. <laughs> this guy here. I think it's a little more than a hobby when you have a hundred grand invested. Hey, you it's guys, you guys ever been to Hobby Lobby? I think it's a lifestyle. No, yeah, you think there. he got the whole setup at Hobby Lobby? I guarantee he didn't get a fucking thing at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, because they're but good Christians. This is a. This is crazy. This guy, right? He made a lot of this shit, and a lot of it is. It's almost like. It's like a different world. Like you, when you hop into the toy box, mm-hmm. you're into this fantasy world of DPR, where there's shit that you've never seen before. There's things that only somebody like him are gonna come up with. Some of these these tools that he made, they look so crude. You're like, you look at it, you're like, if I plug that thing into the wall, that's gonna fucking explode. So there was this one device that I found really interesting when I watched the documentary. It was a piece of PVC pipe. That was rounded off at the top, and I get you. You got to know where it's where it's going, and there was different like inch marks on it. So when it went, you see, you saw how far it would go, and there were like uh, like spikes at the bottom of it, so it would stab you. It was it was a a pretty crude device. I saw that. Wow. Okay. It, you know, he even had one. I believe that would go. Almost like fish hooks in a way where it would go in. And it wouldn't come out. But you can't take it out because the nails were in and bent down. Did you see that? Like a cat penis? 
Like a cat penis, but worse. Oh, God. That, a cat penis will come out. I guarantee it. Oh. This thing... This thing had like nails in it and bent down. So I like know if you were to stick about. it in yeah. and you were to try to pull it oh, out, oh god, it, like one of those gnarly fish hooks. It, it's, yeah. it's not a, it's not a, it's not one of those Chinese finger trap type no, no, things. But I, it's along gotcha. the same principles. Yeah, it's like a penis trap. Once this tube goes in, or a vagina trap. A vagina trap is fucking like some crazy shit. He must have stole that from the Vietnam War or something oh because god. that is some oh. fucked up shit right there. <laughs> Only they would have came up with that shit back then, and uh, I think that was, you know, that's where D DPR got his inspiration. I'm guessing. Yeah. All right, I'll take it. So uh, Ray posed as an undercover police officer and approached a woman named Cynthia Vigil in a parking lot. Um, he told her that she was under arrest for solicitation of sex work and handcuffed her. He put her in his trailer and took her to Elephant Butte. Um, after three days of captivity, Vigil escaped from the trailer at Elephant Butte on March... Elephant butt. It's not elephant butt. <laughs> uh, March 22, 1999. To escape, she waited until Ray went to work and then managed to get the keys to unlock her chains that Ray's accomplice, Cindy Hendy... I love had her. <laughs> no, you don't. Cindy Hendy. She sounds um, like a blow-up doll. Yeah. She had left them on a nearby table um, when she was in another room on the phone. After Vigil got the keys, Hendy noticed Vigil's attempt to escape and a fight ensued. Um, during the struggle, Hendy broke a lamp on the victim's head, but Vigil Oof. managed to unlock her chains and stab Hendy in the neck with an ice pick. Fuck. Because no, there's an ice Jesus. pick in the shed and a phone, too. There's no fucking ice in New Mexico. Right? This yeah. is bullshit. What is going on? Uh, Hendy fell to the floor and Vigil escaped. Uh, Vigil ran away naked, wearing only an iron slave collar and a padlock chains. Once Vigil escaped, she ran down the road seeking help later for and later getting assistance from a nearby homeowner. The homeowner took Vigil in, um, comforted her, and called the police. Her escape finally led the officials to the trailer and the capture of Ray and his accomplices. Number one, Oof. Cindy Hindi sounds like the nickname you'd have for your hand once you hit puberty. <laughs> I've just that's my Cindy Hindi thought right there. Jake, what do you think? You're seconding that one, right? Uh, yeah, well, I was going with blow-up doll, but I think I like your description well, it's better. both. And Legit, then... she is exactly what you're describing. She's just like this this little bottle blonde woman who's really, really trashy and was like 20 years younger than freaking DPR. Um, and they like met at a bar and where she just liked to fight people for no reason and had warrants all over the place. So oh, she sounds great. Right. Exactly what you're like thinking is is Cindy Hindi. Mm. It's Fantastic. true. It's true. I, you know, I had heard, uh, or I think either on a film or something, or read something that she would beat the shit out of men in the bars and right. stuff. She would, she would like. She probably goes to mixers. I think she does. <laughs> There's definitely Cindy Hindi type people there. Yes. For sure. Jake, stay out. Pew pew. Shots fired. <laughs> so, Ray, DPR, and Cindy Hendy get arrested. Uh, after publicly hearing about or hearing about the arrest on the news or whatever, um, another victim, Angelica Montano, came, came forward. She told a very similar story and said that she had reported the incident to police, but there had never been a follow-up. Other women who had escaped from, what is this, Raymond's Lounge? In tr is, is that what they're calling it now? So uh, there was like a number of different bars people were like kidnapped from either he would like i don't want to get too far ahead but i guess we, we might so as Raymond's well lounge is a bar it yeah. is a bar okay normally what would happen was his daughter jesse ray or some of the other accomplices would drug the women um and then like bring them home from the bar raymond's lounge was one of them okay yeah so other women kidnapped from raymond's lounge in truth or consequences which was a town nearby mm -hmm. yeah uh, also came forward the manager of the bar was an accomplice uh, Ray was an armed state park officer, and the manager at Raymond's Lounge gave him credibility, despite knowing that the women were going to end up kidnapped and bad things were going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. So he's a real winner. State park workers are always serial killers, by the way. No. Might as well. It, 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 you know no. what? It's a great hobby for a park worker. It just is. So many of them take advantage of all that open land. It's, I'm just saying. You know, look at Israel Keys. I mean, I would. I mean, it, it is a... No. We're not, very, we're not going down that road. It's a very good window of opportunity right there. But it is it is an interesting side note that some of the people that we've mentioned before have hid people in state parks. Yes. Great place for it. Check it out. So numerous individuals. I wonder what we'd find you, Are you going to give it a Yelp review too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great place to bury a dead body. Five out of five. Baxter State Park, we'll baby. We'll come back again. Numerous individuals, including members of law enforcement, were also accomplices in this torture and, ra and raping box what they called it uh 
bodies were not discovered because they were either dumped down abandoned mines on the east side of Caballo Lake by his accomplices. But they've never found any bodies. Right, because they were dumped down the abandoned so if, mine. So if like, law enforcement was involved in this, you know, of course, that they're not going to find any of that. I'm sure there's a whole big, like, creepy friggin' porno sex snuff film ring probably really you know i'd go in there really yeah. you think you think law enforcement would be into it for some spank bank material um yeah. or maybe for the honeys <laughs> we can we honeys. can totally discuss I mean... that over a beer break if you'd like <laughs> yes. sure Is it great water? It's great water. <laughs> now, I, I got a question for you guys. What? Do you think David Parker Ray had a philosophy of treat him rough, you'll get your muff? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He treated him rough, he got the muff. No, this was the 90s. Full Bush was not in. Oh, shit. Landing strip. Yeah. Jake, what do you think? I, I'm, You're looking... not, I'm not thinking. I'm really confused. You look confused. I am confused. There's no muff. This ain't who, Full who, Bush. Who, who are... What? <laughs> Who, what are, okay, where are we? We're not anywhere. We're just reflecting. Well, I mean, aside from in the shed. All right, so I'll take it back off. So Ray had a video of another victim named Kelly Garrett, um, which dated back to 1996. That's how I know there's no full bush here. Um, Garrett was... Coolio, maybe. <laughs> Garrett was ultimately found in Colorado alive after police identified the tattoo on her ankle. And this tattoo was fugly. I don't even know how to explain it. It was all like... Spooky driftwood. Spooky Ooh, driftwood. It looked like driftwood turning into a ghost. Uh, what? It did. Picture <laughs> That's that. fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, sure. so pretty much when the police identified it, and it was blurry because it was like a shitty, like old school, like video camera he had going on. I think the tattoo was blurry itself. Well, yeah. They sent it over to the FBI to get like digitally enhanced, and then they were able to kind of recreate it, and they went ahead and they um, released that to the public, and that's how they found her. So Garrett uh, later testified that she had gotten in a fight with her husband and decided to spend the night playing pool with friends. On July 24th, 1996, Ray's daughter, who was friends with Garrett, um, took her to the Blue Water Saloon in Truth or Consequences and drugged the beer she was drinking. Um, so a little side note on that. She, she left her beer there and brought someone else home and then came back and started drinking the same warm beer. Yeah, shed people, shed which people is, keep which an is eye disgusting. on your beer. Yeah, that's disgusting. And that's disgusting, but keep an eye on your beer. Keep an eye on your friend's drinks yeah. Yeah, anytime sure. you go out because people do shit like that. Just chug your beer and then go and get another one. Christ, it's not that expensive, and I'm sure she's just drinking like PBR or something. It's like a dollar. She's Bud Light at the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not even with lime. No. Um, so Garrett managed to make it to the parking lot and Ray hit her in the head from behind, knocking her unconscious. Um, Ray took her to uh, his trailer and attached a dog collar and a leash to Garrett. Um, Garrett awoke but blacked out several times during the two-day torture and drugging. Um, during this time, Ray noticed that she was breathing and slashed her throat open. Um, thinking that what? he had killed her, Ray dumped her on the side of a road near Caballo. Um, she was later treated for her injuries at a local clinic. Neither her husband nor police uh, later uh, believed her story. Um, her husband had believed she'd been cheating on him that night, uh, that she was attacked. He had filed for divorce, and Garrett relocated to Colorado. Uh, she was later interviewed on cold case files about her ordeal. That is a horrible story. So it wasn't story. even just the her husband that didn't believe it so when she went to trial, the jury didn't even believe her. What? The first trial they had, it was a hung jury. And he didn't get convicted because every like they were the pro, oh, not prosecution but the defense was trying to make it seem like she was some sort of spurned lover who took off and then um, wasn't really into how rough it was getting and then like reported him. So wow. a, a lot of the people that you know DPR went after, right? They were they were known prostitutes. Was she working as a prostitute? I don't Do we know? believe she was. She wasn't. I don't think she was. No, I found no information saying that she was. So it was oh, just actually a... what I found out when I watched that documentary. She was like a like a daycare provider. Oh shit! Yeah, far from a prostitute. Like really. I don't know if it was anything official, but I think she just like stayed home and watched people's kids type of deal. Just a working lady, yeah. just a regular, any old going to the bar type of person, I right. guess that just fell victim to yeah. some guy and his shit. Yeah, really. Uh, now he, like you were saying, he had other, you know, he had used accomplices. This mm -hmm. was like almost like a, an organization kind of thing right. or a ring, right? 
He had his daughter that you brought up, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse Ray. Jesse Ray. And uh, her, now this guy's her boyfriend? Yeah, that would be uh, Dennis Roy Yancey. I love Dennis Yancey. Sounds like a type of a shitty cheeseburger gonna, chain, doesn't it? We're just going to call him dry. Denny Yancey's. <laughs> God. You know? <laughs> now this guy here, uh, he's done it. He's He's been known for doing a number of things, right? Yeah. Uh, was he the guy that did the Halloween thing? He is the like one who ruins Halloween. And oh, Halloween, shit. I love it. It is my favorite thing. But Halloween was canceled because of Roy Yancey here. He went and ran around with his friends, strangled a bunch of cats, knocked over some tombstones, and uh, yeah. Jake, I think Roy, uh, Halloween was not canceled for Roy Yancey himself. I think that was a kick-ass Halloween if you were to ask him. Yeah. Not well, yeah, me. I don't opinion, go around strangling cats or nothing. Yeah, in his opinion, he had a great time. That's awful. He remembers Halloween. Yeah, that was a... Remember <laughs> that Halloween back then? <laughs> remember the Halloween I strangled 25 cats and knocked over headstones? That sounds great. Now, what else do we got about on Roy Yancey? All right. So, um, it was also said he admitted actually to strangling a former girlfriend named Marie Parker uh, that uh, DPR had kidnapped um, and tortured. He would do all these crazy things. There was also this like section of, I was almost just said the shed, but the, the toy box um, where it was like, there was like an alcove built into the wall where you'd get strapped in there. It looked like a stretcher. Um, and then they would just close it off. So they kept Marie in there. Um, and then DPR eventually like convinced Roy Yancey to strangle and kill her um, wow. under, the, under the threat that it would happen to him if he had not. So now who's saying this? Is it that's that's from Roy Yancey? That's from Roy Yancey. Apparently, like I'm going to go back to this really good documentary I watched. Uh, apparently, the, the police felt that he was being completely truthful of that, that there was no question. Um, so he was event eventually convicted of second degree murder and conspiracy to commit first degree murder. Murder, yeah, murder. Moida. Moida, and received two 15 year terms. So since that murder, uh, DPR has allegedly admitted to having an accomplice named Billy Bowers, um, who was a previous business partner um, who supposedly DPR also murdered. Interesting. But have any of these bodies come up? No, nothing. None. Nothing. Not a one. So, Jake, are you buying any of this? You believe in this stuff? Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, it's they, just weird that no bodies come up. Well, the FBI sent 100 agents to examine DPR's property and surroundings. Um, no human remains ever turned up there. Well, what about the mine that they were supposedly dumped down? They was, uh, That was searched as well. Yeah, I mean, there's so many places in friggin' elephant butt here that they could stick something. Thank you. It is elephant butt. I told you. <laughs> they even searched the lake at the butt. Right. The and lake at the butt. nothing. <laughs> nothing in there. Nothing, nothing at all. Right. Nothing at all. Interesting. But, like, think about it. You're, like, in New Mexico. You could just, like, toss shit over the border, too. Is DPR a master of his craft? I think he is. He's close. He's close. He got caught. He did get caught. Yeah. He let one escape. And, like, Donald Trump says, I don't like people that get caught. I'm just, there's my political thing. I'm done. I'm done. I'm You're done. done. Let's You're take done. it back. You're done. Take it back. Take All it right. away. So, to prevent women from reporting the crimes, Ray had drugged them with agents to induce amnesia. He had taped himself telling one of the women that the drugs were sodium pentothal and phenobarbital. What is that? They're drugs to, uh, to in induce amnesia. So, one woman remained uncertain that her recollections of abuse were anything but nightmares until contacted by the FBI. After questioning, she came to remember her mistreatment in increasing detail, and that was Kelly Garrett. And from what I understand, yep. they started as like small little nightmares, right. and as time went on, they they progressed mm -hmm. and they started to become more vivid. Right. And it was almost like she was, of course, well, of course, she was remembering things. Yeah. In her sleep, uh, but that really nailed it home right then. Yeah, and she could see a lot of it because even during the times he had like her blindfolded, she could see underneath it and see everything that was happening. So she even remembered that part. Because she's like, oh, you, you can almost envision that in your mind where she's laying there and just kind of can see the little bit of light kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. And people maybe walking back and forth. And, of course, that guy's whatever kind of voice he has. Right. It's gross. It's, don't, no, yucky. <laughs> don't do that. Don't huh? do that. DPR here. <laughs> DPR here. Who wants to play? Okay. So what ends up happening to this guy, Jake? He ends up going to trial, three separate trials, actually. One for Cynthia, Cynthia Vigil, uh, another for Angelica Montano, and the third one for Kelly Garrett. Trial one resulted in a mistrial and a retrial, and in the retrial, he was convicted on all 12 counts. Uh, Montano died before trial, before her trial, unfortunately. What happened to her? Do we know? You know, I don't know. I think that, she, I don't know. It's a good question. It's a very good question. I don't know. We'll have to look into it. Living that hard country life. 
So anyway, because she had passed, they uh, they decided not to conduct it, obviously. Yeah. Um, he agreed to a plea bargain under the terms of which he was sentenced in 2001 to 224 years in prison for numerous offenses involved with the, adu- with the abduction and sexual torture of three young women at his elephant butt lake home. Oh, man. Elephant butte, I know. Butte. Butte. Butte, excuse me. Yeah, Ray's it, daughter, Glenda Jean, Jesse Ray. Jesse Ray. <laughs> Jesse Ray. Are you Jesse Ray? Jesse. No. Ew, d- no. <laughs> was also tried on charges of kidnapping. She was sentenced to two and a half years in prison with an additional five years to be served on probation. She got a pretty good sentence. She really did. Adam, I have a question for you. Can you do a, Her- a Herbert the Pervert impression from he Family Guy? He already was. Was it, it? it was it was very close, but I, I've never watched Family Guy. The voice what? you were just doing yeah. for DPR. Do is, it again. That was my pervert voice. That is the pervert where he Do wants to give popsicles to little boys. Hi there. <laughs> yes. That, that, okay. All right. We'll take it. You guys want to come to my toy box? I got all kinds of treats in there for He's you. He's got a dog named Jesse, too. Want to see Jesse? He's <laughs> awful nice. Oh, Jesus. Christ. All right. We're not, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. So in 1999, accomplice uh, Dennis Roy Yancey was convicted of the strangulation murder of Marie Parker in Elephant Butte, which Ray recorded. Um, wow. Yeah. In 2000, Cindy Hindi, an accomplice who testified against Ray, received a sentence of 36 years for her role in the crimes. Um, she was scheduled to receive parole in 2017. So I wonder if she's out yet. Is she out? I'm wondering that. that is, that's interesting. That's a good follow-up. That's a good question. What's, what's she doing? Let's go find out. I wonder what she's doing. What is she doing? She got Facebook? Hold on. Let's check. Are you going to look? I am oh, going to look. man. I am going to look right she now. She would love the shed. I I'm mean, it's sure nothing I... like the toy box, you know? It's a lot smaller in here. We don't have as cool Oh, God. Cool shed. I've been talking all this shit. She's going to come kick my ass. There's yeah. nothing. Oh, is this the one? Oh, my God. It might be her. Uh, let's find out. Nope. Are you sure? I can't tell. I mean, it's possible, but... Like, click on the picture. I think that might be her. No. Oh. You Canada? Wanna, nah. You guys want to hear something that I love, right? Now, in 2002, anyway. as DPR is just sitting in jail, waiting for transport, really, you know, I, or whatever's going on at that time, he ends up dying of a major heart attack. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So basically, he just kind of lived his best life. He did his thing. Did his thing and died a happy man. The guy went out on top. You know, he was on top of his game, Jake. He did his thing, and he died like a rock star. Yeah, he died without facing any consequences for what he did. In truth or consequences. In truth yeah, or consequences. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. He lived his best life. He won the game show. I get it now. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I get it now. Jake, that sh- it was a game show, right? That town is named after a game show, correct? Yes. That yes. has to be what the show is, because I had no fucking clue what it's about. It was oh all God. about DPR. Oh, no. This is oh, awesome. No. Wow, this is great. Oh, shit. Can we find this on Netflix? Yeah, probably pretty soon here. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, probably. So, I can't seem to find anything about when she was released. I'm trying to find... I'm looking through this Reddit thread right now. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, so Ray said that the two and a half years imprisonment since his arrest had allowed him to reflect, read his Bible, and get well with God. Good idea. <laughs> Ray said that he put his life in the hands and that he could not change the past. He could only be repentant. Does this guy look like a piece of shit Colonel Sanders? You've seen him. He's like a greasy dude with a gross mustache and like a really weird smile. And he always looks somewhat moist. He always looks moist. He always looks moist. Like he's, it looks like he's got his park ranger outfit on. It looks like it's never been washed and he's just kind of greasy and moist looking. <sighs> what the fuck is he? he's like a li- he's like some kind of shitty weird lizard oh that- he's like some kind of a lizard and matthew mcconaughey no had a child maybe okay. and it came out all fucked up and then you got dpr <laughs> dtf in the toy box this oh guy is God, a weirdo my brain fucking hurts <laughs> Jake, you're silent, man. Yeah, I, I was. I'm trying to follow. I was reading, and then I just jumped back in. He's kind of like Jeff Foxworthy in an older, greasy, moist way. He's got all that desert. That's a sand horrible on. picture to put in my head. I hope he showered before our toy box activities, because oh my god. I don't think he showered. Oh, no, 
No, that just adds to their pleasure. <laughs> Jurgen, do you think he showered after he walked his dog? No. And by no. walk the dog, do you know what I'm talking I know about? What you're talking about? Take us down. I, I think I think is probably the shed's favorite DPR moment. So, I mean, this is just. Do you want me just to go off the cuff on this because I can? Do it. Yeah. So he had constructed. I don't know if he constructed one of these or bought one of these because you can definitely buy them. Not that they're humane, but it's gross. He made this like kind of like pillory type thing, I guess you could say, that he would like tie or chain his victims to. Oh, he made it. He made it. Yeah. And it would have you in like a doggy style type position. And then he would let his German shepherds on you. Um, so what he liked to do was he'd get all his neighbors together who were a bunch of like swingers or whatever. And he'd put whoever the victim was in the living room and make the dogs like have sex with them in front of everybody. And he was really, he really had a penchant for like watching them do anal. Yeah. Kind of makes me think of a donkey show. There's something wrong with this guy. It's a doggy show. That is fucked up. Something seriously fucking wrong with this guy. He had like swinger friends over. These people swang it real hard. I guess so. Yeah, I guess the fuck. What if he charged admission? Would he the girl with the doggy? Well, wouldn't he charge people to use to use the people that he had captured too? Well, I think no, that he, was he part did. Of the thing. He had some friends that would come over at times and would rape his captives. Right. Oh, okay. But they were All kind right. of boring. They were into like you know regular shit that normal people yeah. do. Yeah. So that was a blessing for the poor people in captivity, right? Right. <laughs> if you could call it that. They'd have like a potluck and a gangbang, you know. Yeah, Ooh. that's nice. Oh, if you bring the buffalo chicken dip, everything will be fine. What? Well, well, this is starting good. to sound kind of pleasant. <laughs> if everyone contributes you had me at potluck <laughs> oh god <laughs> alright so in 2010 Yancey was paroled after serving 11 years in prison but the release was delayed in difficulties in negotiating a plan for his residence nobody wanted to take Roy in <sighs> no. not this time Roy no 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 three months after his release in 2011 Yancey was charged with violation of probation of course yeah well he's got nowhere to go and he will be Remanded to custody until 2021 to serve the remainder of his original sentence. Mm. The end. The, the end. end. Boy, this one does not have a happy ending. Not really. No. At least, I mean, it has a happy ending for friggin' DPR. DPR had yeah, many happy never, endings. He never had to serve a day you for know, anything he did, that he, he did. He lived his best life, banged a bunch of chicks, got right with Jesus. And, you know, uh, people that listen to yeah. this will be like, that wasn't banging chicks. You know, they will. That was rape. That's <laughs> people are gonna hate on me not that they don't already it's all right i don't get it either man i don't get it uh, you cannot call human remains it apparently we do ever we do apparently apparently we're trash we uh, well, I've, well i've heard that from more than one person that i might be able to kind of agree with right there but <laughs> but hey <laughs> i'm a classy woman so with a trash bag on your window. With a trash bag. <laughs> so what do we got? Are we oh, just God. about all wrapped up with DPR? I mean, I guess so. DPR, catch him on NPR. Are you guys no, going to post dead. the link he... to the transcript? Like We should. Yeah, we, we should. can do that. Yeah, like we tried last, last Friday. Well, no, you tried. I tried. I read the full transcript on like... We recorded it, and it was a lot to get through. One, fucking disturbing. Two, this guy, DPR, repeats himself over and over and over again, and it was that bad we're just not going to play it. Oh, yeah, it's like he starts talking, and he forgets what he's saying mid-sentence and just starts over. And then I started forgetting what I was saying, and like, oh, my God, 35 friggin' minutes. I will yeah. never get back. How many pages was it? Like 18? 18, 18 pages. Oh, my God. I just like to talk and talk and talk. Yep. So, yeah. That's it. I guess we can... Uh... Actually, why don't you tell us about your project? Well, okay. You got something going on here. Yeah, What's up so, with that? So um, I'm currently working on my own podcast with a good friend of mine. With um, an awesome name. With an awesome name. So we, we decided finally today we're going to be calling it The Funeral Party. Um, we might do a little true crime here and there. Hopefully you guys will be on for that. And it could be just kind of like a crossover episode. Yeah. But it's mostly going to be like controversial topics and just like interesting topics. So definitely be on the lookout for that because it's going to be amazing. We're like, we made a recording studio out of my walk-in closet. <laughs> it's friggin' amazing. How many people fit in this closet? So you would be surprised. I have a full size like futon in there, like big wood one. Mm -hmm. um, so he and I can fit on there comfortably, and I can just like sprawl out. Um, we could fit like maybe even two or three like more people. So like a total of four on the futon. Um, 
and if I move shit around and like moved my clothes out, we could fit like a chair on each side. So comfortably, there could be four of us in there. Bigger than the shed? It's bigger than the shed. Yes. Wow. Shit. I'm jealous, Adam. We need to move into the bigger shed. I know. We're I'm... gonna have to. We're gonna have to beat out her closet here. I got a hell of a closet too. We could try. I just have to move my clothes to the shed. That might be a fucking right. bane. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Reese doesn't need a bedroom. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, I guess it's about that time. It's uh, about that time. You can find us on Facebook at Stories from the Shed, Instagram, Stories from the Shed Podcast, YouTube, Stories from the Shed Podcast, Twitter, at Stories from Shed, Snapchat, Stories from Shed, our Gmail, which is SFTS Podcast at gmail.com. God damn, we have so much social media. You need it, though, and you need to be more active on your Twitter. That's how you find me. I hate Twitter. Twitter. I'm going to keep twitting. Go ahead, Adam. It's all you. I trust you. I'll twit away. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.